Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Toon Kind at 12 FPS. My name is Wiss, and I am going to be playing Tiffley Ford and Missy Ford. And that's it. Uh, yes, I'm going solo for this. As this is a conversation between two siblings, which is distinctly, <laughs> distinctly overdue. Um, this is We Can Afford a Moment. And uh, I have no idea how long this is going to go for, <laughs> but... Uh, We'll see how we do. See how well I can, I can swap between voices live. It'll be fun. Um, <clears throat> so we are opening at the castle home of Scribble Scrambles and Celeste Alamos, who are providing a safe haven for those involved in Winona's super awesome University City storyline. Shout out to Winona, who's here listening live. Hi, Nona. <laughs> which uh, if you're not up to date on that storyline there are absolutely spoilers here guys so yeah um <clears throat> this is taking direct place after the rescue the kids game which was last week i think um <clears throat> so for the remainder of the day of the rescue and most of the day after. Chifley was staying with Lau in one of the castle's guest rooms, mostly resting and waiting for Chifley's emotional state to stabilize long enough for his pointiness to defrost. Um, but even after most of the ice had melted and his voice had come back, his hair was still white, but it was more than enough to make Chifley feel up to seeing his sister. And when he went to go and do that, Lau chose to go and look around the castle, leaving Chifley to spend some time with Missy. But he's not, he's not approached her properly. He's just sort of been in the room and not talking to her. And it's been a little while and Missy's over it. So she's going to do something about it. Chifley, stop hovering! I'm, I'm not. You are! You've been acting really weird. Are you okay? I should be asking you that. And it'll make her pause a little bit and then go, Suppose that's a thing that people do. Makes Chifley frown a little bit. Do you want to talk about it? Alone? He hesitates a little, but then he nods. If you want. There's a balcony over here. We could sit. Sure. Missy grins, but then she pauses and she'll turn and yell into the corridor. Maddie, I can see you! Don't you fall or I'll kick your butt! And <laughs> Chifley can only really smile, but Missy takes him by the hand and starts leading him towards the balcony. And... I want you to picture these two. Chifley stands at four foot nine, where he has done for years. Missy, though, she's grown. And while Chif has known this, he's very aware of it now, with her now at three foot two. Her normal clothes had been ripped beyond salvage, so her new outfit is a pants and tank top combo, provided very, very kindly by their hosts. And yeah, she just seems different. The balcony is lovely with seats looking over the ocean. And Missy heads straight over to the railing to look over it. I hope we can go to the beach while we're here. You're in recovery, not on vacation. We're in a castle by the beach, though. Even so. Missy is pouting. Which just makes Chifley smile. And Missy looks him up and down and then tilts her head to one side. So, are you going to tell me why you keep looking at me so weird? Chifley. Chifley looks away for a bit, but then... You're not okay. Even if you're acting like it. I feel okay. Miss Celeste made sure we were all healed when we came in. Not... not like that. Lo and Crystal and I wouldn't have let you stay injured even before Miss Celeste looked at you all. 
So, like what? You were kidnapped, Missy. I know! I had noticed! You're not okay. I think I'm pretty okay. We broke out! And she caught you anyway. Yeah, I'm not super happy about that. Her stupid magic got us before we could kick her butt. After what she endured from us, I doubt you could have done much. Missy looks quite insulted and takes a few steps back from him. No, hang on, that's not fair! Chifley just sort of blinks and takes a, like, he doesn't step back, but he leans back as if he wasn't expecting that. We absolutely could have kicked your teeth in with half the chance. Do you know the day we had? We had skeletons! Elephant skeletons! And eyeballs! And a dinosaur skeleton! And these weird illusion giant panther things with funny tails! And there's just this little small gasp and a mutter of displacers from Chifley. But Missy just continues her rant now that she's rolling. And a dragon skeleton! On top of having two puzzles! We had a proper whole adventure! And we beat every single monster in our path! So don't you dare say we couldn't have fought her! If there was any color that had come back into Chifley's hair, it, it was gone again. Not necessarily just because she was telling him off, but the thought of his sister and her friends fighting displacer beasts. Especially with Mad Lad's history. The thought of it being repeated. He didn't he didn't like that thought occurring to him, but it was there. We're not babies, Chifley. We're big enough and strong enough to go on adventures and fight actual monsters trying to kill us and win. I could fight you and your magic and probably win. Hey. I'll prove it! Fight me right now! I I can't fight you, Missy. Why not? There's like four clerics in the castle. You'll be fine. You see, I, I can't. The crack in Chifley's voice makes Missy pause a little bit. And then she sighs. I want you to believe me then. When I say that I'm strong, we got caught and needed rescue, but that happens to grown up sometimes too. You needed to be rescued once. So did Cassie. I'm sure it happens to other grown-ups too. So I don't want you to treat me and Maddie and Joy like we're weak just because of this. Chifley had still been standing, but he sits down on the bench and doesn't look at her. You're not... not weak. You never have been. Then why are you still in minor? That makes Chifley look up. I haven't been listening much lately. But I can still hear themes, just like you can. And you've been in a minor key since we got here. It was loud enough to hear from our room. Chifley kind of sighs and looks out over the ocean idly. Guilt, I guess. Guilt? What do you have to be guilty of? I... Maybe if I had been... closer, still still at home, or... you might not have been taken, or... gone so long, or... something. Chifley! We deliberately went somewhere out of the way to do our homework. You would have been just as far away if you lived with me and Uncle Dorian, or not. But... Chifley, this isn't your fault! Stop trying to make it your fault! I... I promised. I promised Mom I would look after you. And you have! But now, except for stupid kidnappers like this, I can look after myself! Chifley just hisses air through his teeth and looks away. You were kidnapped and made to fight monsters, displacer beasts, no less. And you, you aren't okay. How could you be after no time at all? When 
when I, I couldn't, I mean, I mean, look at your hair for a start. What about my hair? Does it look bad? No, that's not the point. This whole thing is forced to redesign, Missy. It's not, it's not just your hair. It's not, it's not just your hair. And he's worrying his hands together, stopping ice crystals from forming too large over them, knocking them off in tiny pieces instead. Missy has sort of run a hand over her now quite short little pixie cut and then trots over so she's standing close. Then what? I don't feel very different. Your theme. It... I, I, I had hoped this was a... A temporary change, a temporary shift because of the kidnapping. Can you, can you not hear the change? She tilts her head to the side as she listens for a bit. No, not really. It's different. And, and I had hoped maybe now that you're safe it would start to sound the way it should, the way it did. It's, its tone has changed. Your arrangement is different. It's... I lost its innocence a bit, its its childishness a bit. It's changed and it's not not changing back. There is a pause as Missy ponders this, but then she grins. Like it's grown up? Chiff looks up with alarm, but Missy looks delighted. That's it, isn't it? Is my theme more mature? Grown up? Not a little child anymore? Uh, uh... So maybe I have grown up? The Yapatunas isn't so big anymore! I... I don't want there to be a, a gap. Chifley, you're like 14 years older than me. There will always be a gap. But I'm not a little baby anymore. You don't need to carry me. I can walk on my own. Chifley just sort of sighs deeply and... Missy watches him and goes and sits beside him on the bench. I want to have more adventures. Maddie's fought a dragon before on his. Like, an alive one. And one! I want to have adventures like that. Travel some. And then you're free to do whatever you like. You can stop worrying. I don't know about that. I do. Worrying is bad for you. Don't think I didn't see how all pointy you got. <sighs> you, you saw that, huh? Sure did. You'll get frostbite like that. That's just a bit of a scoff. <laughs> Not sure that I can. What I mean is, you don't have to freeze over because of me. Okay? Chifley just sort of looks away and doesn't really respond to that. And after a little bit, Missy just sighs and she stands up again and goes back over to the railing to look over the water. You know, I think I know why you're so weird about this. She looks over her shoulder at him, and he looks up to look at her. Because Mom and Dad are gone. Chifley winces at that remark. Thought so. Makes sense. You remember them a lot better than I do, so them being gone hurts more. I... I can't... I can't lose you, too. Then let me be strong. And get stronger. Then you won't. I promise. You can't promise that. Well, okay. No, I guess I can't. But I can promise to do my best. To keep me and everyone I am with safe as best I can. When I'm at home, I'll still go to school. When I'm on adventures, I'll get strong and have experience of all sorts. And bring home stories. <sighs> you sound... Just like Dad when he left. Well, is that a bad thing? 
he died on his adventure. What's stopping you from doing the same? Nothing. There are a few distinct ice-cracking noises from Chifley at that. But, plot will come for me one way or the other. May as well face it prepared. She comes up and and I just realized that my recording didn't start. Fuck. <laughs> well, we'll start it now. Why not? I clicked the button, but here we go. This is why we have backups. <laughs> Carrying on. Um, she comes up and hugs her brother around his head. I'll do my best to keep myself safe. And with Maddie and Joy, we can face the world. And you can spend time with Mr. Lau and be happy. I want that for you as much as you want that for me. Since when have you been so eloquent? Since I fought an elephant. <laughs> Jeff just sort of snorts. Missy grins and then just goes, Thank you for coming to save us, though. Can you thank Mr. Lau, too? Yeah. I'll, I'll pass it on. I thank him myself, but he doesn't like me, so... He doesn't not like you. I must be super ugly or something, then. He doesn't like looking at me. And she gives a big grin and goes, It's okay, though! He likes looking at you a lot better. And Chifley just immediately starts to blush. Ha! That got you out of minor for a second. You little tease. Go on, go take your boyfriend home. He's not, he's, he's not my, we haven't talked about that. I, he only knows because I was reckless. You? Reckless? <laughs> what did you do? That's not like you. You're usually forcing yourself to be all responsible and junk. I must be rubbing off on you after all. I... I... Kissed him. Oh! Oh, definitely! So he really is your boyfriend then! I... I don't... Don't know if he even wants that. We... We haven't talked about it since. Well, maybe you should then. You know where we'll be. Mr. Scribbles thinks it's a good idea to stay here for a bit. I'll stay and help protect the castle. I don't want to let this happen again. <sighs> Write me letters, at least. Okay. Every day. That I can promise. The two share a very tight hug. Missy's arms are around Chifley's neck, but his are across her back. I'll see you soon, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take care. You, you got this. Yeah, I do. And while he hesitates a little more, Chifley does let go of Missy, and he stands up and heads off the balcony to search for Lau and make their departure for home. Missy stays out on the balcony for a little longer, and she lets the sun warm her up after her brother's cold fades away. And she smiles at the horizon. A new adventure is coming, and this time with her brother's blessing. And with that, she feels like she could do anything. And that's where I'm going to leave them. No, this wasn't a very long FPS is more a read aloud than anything, I guess, but I hope you have enjoyed this cute little cute little conversation between the Ford siblings and I will see you guys at the next thing. Bye.